everybody, and welcome to Camel City Chat, another episode. And I'm here with C.J. Johnson, president of the Winston-Salem Dash. I'm John McPherson, your host, and I just want to say thanks again for watching us today, listening to us on Spotify or iTunes. Make sure to go to YouTube, click the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get alerted and just like it so that we can get the message out about everything going on in and around the Camel City. So who's C.J. Johnson? Baseball. <laughs> C.J. Johnson, president of the Winston-Salem Dash. I cannot believe you're on the show. It's such an honor to me. You guys uh, had reached out and said, hey, what's going on? Well, well, John, why aren't you calling me? And I'm like, hey, come on. I, I'd love to have you on. Um, so I got to ask you the first three questions. Got to okay. be fair. Where are you from and how long you been in Winston? Okay. I'm from Maryland originally. Okay. And I've been in Winston a total of 10 years. Okay. All right. Now, Little known to everyone, I'm from Maryland originally, but that's in the 1600s. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, but uh, like Port Tobacco or something, supposedly where they landed, but I don't know. But beautiful state. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts in Maryland are you from? Far western part. Okay. Uh, so Allegheny County. So okay. pretty much West Virginia. Okay. And so if you go to the far western part of the Maryland, that's right where I grew up, Cumberland, Maryland. I uh, lived there in the 80s and 90s. Okay. And, uh, and Where'd then, you go to school? I went to West Virginia University, was mm. the closest I'm college. I'm a Mountaineer as well, Appalachian <laughs> State Mountaineers. Very good. The other so Mountaineers. we like each other. Yeah. That's right, yeah. You say the other Mountaineers, we say the other <laughs> Mountaineers. It's one of the two. Yeah. So cool. All right. So you graduated from WVU. We both don't like Marshall. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, okay, yeah. there. Hey, so that's We good. aren't Marshall. Yeah, we aren't Marshall, <laughs> yeah. Um, Where's your favorite place to eat? And you're not allowed to say the Flow Club or the Carolina Plan, okay? The next one, by the way, is going to be what's your favorite thing to do? And Dash Games cannot be it, although it should be. Okay. All right, we got to give you. We got to give people other That's things fair. to do. That's yeah. fair. Uh, right. So I, I live out in Clemens, and All so right. our, our closest spot that that I that we really like to go to as a family is Tanglewood Pizza. Tanglewood Pizza is a good place. You ever get the egg on the pizza? There's, I don't. I did it one time. I will not do it again. Their pizza is good. I do <laughs> like Tanglewood Pizza. As um, uh, Jeff Smith was on a few weeks ago, we were talking about when it was uh, the inaugural. We were at at Windmock, and so. Uh, um, was right near Tangwood Pizza. Thought I was going to end up there, but we ended up uh, calling it a night early. But a <laughs> great place. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Chang Thai's out there, isn't it? Uh, that sounds right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, at the Harris Teeter Shopping Center. Another good one out there is uh, Twenty Five Twenty. I really like going Definitely. to Twenty Five Twenty. Definitely. So, what's your favorite thing to do in Winston when you get a chance to? Uh, really, anything with, with my kids. I have okay. two girls, nine and six, and so baseball season and our, my, my job. Pulls me away from home a lot, so anytime I can, can be with them. CJ, I hate to be rude here, and I'm going to call <laughs> him out on this one. You have a carousel at your work. I do. Inflatables. Um, staff in there that makes sure no one gets hurt. <laughs> You can't be missing your kids too much at ball game time. Yeah, my girls are a little spoiled when yeah. it comes to sporting events. Yeah, uh, I've got a bag for the band. <laughs> your girls have them probably tattooed on their wrist, right? They, they do. Uh, dinner uh, dinner's provided there yep. when they go. So uh, they make it to about thirty to thirty five baseball games a year. So that's crazy. They are spoiled. And and I, I I just I'm so excited about this one thing that that you and I were kidding around before we started the show. You know we gotta we gotta do the green room <laughs> side of the chat here uh, and ask questions. So I told you my. Winston Salem Dash experience started with the Warthogs and a guy named Pete Fish. And what did you tell me? And Pete's son Drew works for the Dash now, so it's come full circle. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, I told you I threw out a first pitch and the first question. I can't believe you asked me this. <laughs> yeah, hey, I want to know if uh, if you threw a strike. And I told you I didn't baba buoy it. <laughs> I actually threw a strike. I don't even think I stepped off the mound. I think I actually threw from the mound. Um, but um, I am, I'm all airport team when it comes to sports. I mean, I look great in the airport. <laughs> Just don't put me on the field, all right? My varsity letter, and I am admitting this, is in cheerleading. That was the mascot for my, uh, my high school. Well, I have yeah, an so opportunity on our, on our dash pack, our entertainment crew. Uh, yeah, no, um, <laughs> uh, I, you've had some really good ones on there, too. Uh, I'm friends with uh, JJ. Um, and then... Um, is it Rebecca or who is the uh, Rebecca was Rebecca? The, first couple, the first three years I believe. Yeah, yeah. Did she just get engaged or? Her, yeah, she just got engaged or her sister just get engaged. I don't know. Uh, somebody <laughs> did. I one of them did. Okay, so I, yeah. Um, I, I think her sister's married, so I think Rebecca just got engaged for some reason. I don't know. It was on the Book of Faces. That's how yes. we found out about this. So yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, what you do. All right. So we know where you're from. You've been in Winston. How long? Favorite place to eat? All those things. But the but the job is the the dash. 
Yeah, so it's funny as a staff when we kind of talk about all the the specific bullet points within our job descriptions and what we're trying to accomplish. At the end of the day, our big overarching goal is to help people create fun memories. Right. And so that's that's what we always come back to, uh, whether it's with our non-game day events or on game nights. We want to create fun memories. So that's a that's a pretty good job to have when that, when that's your your main goal. Mm-hmm. And, and I want to get people to where you are, and, and I, I'm going to ask a long question in a few minutes about what is the game day experience, because I think that that has to be, you know, you've got to paint that picture for people because there's so much stuff to do there. But I guess the question is, is you're president of the, of the group now. Well, you started out as what? So most of my career was in ticket sales and sponsorship sales, right. uh, so generating revenue, right. uh, which is obviously important to, to any organization. And so a lot of my experience w- were on those two sides. And, and when I ele- was elevated to the president position, at that point now, it's it's really kind of being involved in every aspect. So whether it's operations, entertainment, merchandise, in addition, certainly to, to the sales side. And facilities, because, I mean, you've had some pretty cool events there, too. Yes, um, we, uh, we're at over 250 non-game day events now. So we have our 70-dash baseball games, 250 non-dash baseball events. So we're getting very close to 365, which, you know, when we built the ballpark, that was one of the goals. You know, we talked about it being a community gathering place and not just a baseball stadium. And I, I think it's been that and, and more than we could ever imagine. And our elected officials took a lot of heat about that. Um, and, and you were here in the beginning and helped put the – facility together working with Mr. Prim and and the group and um, uh, I, I'm so happy that it's turned out to be what it was I, I, what I, excuse me what I say uh, um, Ozzie Guillen had made the comment that it was nicer than Wrigley Field um, but uh, you know the loan was was made the loan's been paid back and we have this this centerpiece uh, right there that is just a gathering place you, you got proms now you got uh, uh, I went there for a beer thing a couple years back, you know, uh, tastings and stuff. And, um, you know, y- you have fun runs, and that's where they start off. You've got concerts. I mean, w- w- what's next? Yeah, it's it's an amazing community asset, and it, it is really fun for me to see looking back from, from 12 years ago whenever I was out doing some of those speaking engagements and going to talk to Rotary Clubs and civic organizations and People said, do we need this? Mm-hmm. Uh, and at that point, it was more hypotheticals of, you know, here's why and here's what it can be. And to sit here now, 12 years later, and to see what it is and what it's done for our community and what it's done for that that end of downtown is awesome for me to sit in, in, in my role and, and see. And what's developing around it. Definitely. So, I mean, what, I mean, you got great apartments. I mean, what all is going on around you? Yeah, so there's been a 20% increase in residential addresses within a half mile of the ballpark since it opened. Uh, which you just don't see. I mean, that doesn't happen by accident within a couple. We got the couple numbers guy here. I'm loving this. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, okay. so it's it, it, for me to see that 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 community develop right around it and and tie in West Salem and the West End, and and what our great neighborhoods now are, are connecting together and and I know we'll talk probably about Salem Parkway reopening, but but what that does as well just to add some connectivity to those neighborhoods and the ballpark being at the at the edge of downtown and and you know on the doorstep as you're pulling into downtown to see that as you come in the main artery it's great well i mean let's be honest folks i mean you cj you guys have created a bridge in a sense to those communities and literally who would have thought that dot would close a bridge Mm -hmm. for traffic so that people could walk across to the stadium I mean, you know, it's it's a way for downtown and all that stuff. And, I mean, it's not just specifically for you, but there's a bridge mm-hmm. now that's going to have plants on it, and the, the arches look great already. And, I mean, you guys are an impetus for why that's there. It's, uh, I mean, what they've done with the pedestrian strollway that will be part of, of Salem Parkway is tremendous to make our community walkable, bikeable, uh, and, and really just to connect those communities. I think, you know, for a long time, 52 and Business 40 were, were dividers uh, right. uh, of our community. And now there's literally and figuratively bridges being made to connect those communities. And so it's 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 really fun for us to be part of that. Uh, I just love Peters Creek Parkway. You got that, you know, bowling alley, yeah. basically. You can walk across the bridge now. Yeah. When they said they were going to expand it to six lanes, right. uh, we were – 
little nervous of how what that of, meant. How much of the ballpark are you going to cut off there? Right? So it, it got a little closer to us. Uh, it made it even a little bit more intimate of our, of right. our setting of, of the roadways right beside our ballpark. And they've done a, an amazing job with, with that whole project. And the communication has been fantastic between the, the contractors, Pat Ivey's DOT, the uh, and working with us. And so we're, we're excited to be at the tail end of, of that process. Yeah, Pat Ivey is the man. I mean, what, what he and his staff did going and sitting down and telling people in the community, hey, here's what's going on. This is what we're going to do. How do you want to do it? This and that. Just it, no one, no one was upset. <laughs> You know, it just, they really, really did an excellent job. And I think a lot of people from, and, and you probably see this since your office is there, um, you know, uh, going in and to work, they're doing a lot of tours. I mean, there are people coming in trying to figure out how we're doing this and how, and, and what they can do in their own communities. Yeah. And as much, I'll give them credit, I'll give credit to our community as well, because mm-hmm. this, you know, while it was, it was a painful process, everybody knew it was coming. And I think the communities handled it extremely well Mm -hmm. and and i think you know everybody knew it needed to happen and those entry ways were were tough and 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 probably dangerous and so you know much needed project and and we're ecstatic that it'll be open for the 2020 season well um speaking of the 2020 season i know you heard the podcast a couple weeks ago i did i did he told me you said you said john i I left it in the car and we'll, we'll, we'll but no, uh, we want to get a hat or something up here so we can so we can so we can show the our, our pride in our team. And I'd like to leave you in anticipation. Yeah, so yeah we, no, we no, will no, get no, you set up with with some da- great dash gear. Well, I mean, it's it, I'll tell you honestly, uh, and the new logo, love it. I mean, is that like that? You know, it's almost. Is it, does that go almost back to the spirits kind of like logo? It's definitely a classic feel. Right. Uh, so a lot of different kind of processes we went through and some inspirations as we looked at different logos and old logos for this community but looking around at, at the industry and the minor league baseball as an industry is really trended towards more cartoonish right logos and and, and looks and we went the other direction uh and th- it's actually been overwhelmingly positive response and so we're well, the innuendo we're too uh, there's been a couple of teams that have changed their names to get kind of an innuendo <laughs> in there so they can say go something or whatever um it's classic that what you guys have done. And I think the piece is if I don't like baseball, I might still wear it just because you're representing the 336. That's right. It's it's a Winston-Salem brand as much as it's a Dash brand, and that's really what we wanted to go for. Right. Um, that yeah, what, And that's really our, our business model as well, that you can come to our games and not have to be a baseball fan, but now you can wear our merchandise and you're representing Winston-Salem as much as you're representing the Dash when you right. put that on. Yeah, it's 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 just a great uh, it's a great new logo. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, I'll tell you what. Why don't we have Stabler put it up on the uh, on uh, on the screen here? You 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 were kind enough to share a picture with us. So, folks, this is what the Dash uh, logos uh, and uh, team. Uh, it's a uniform picture too. Uh, it's just hats, just, right, just now. hats right now. We'll, we'll be introducing the the jerseys here in, in a few weeks. Okay, so, so let's stay let's, tuned on the right, jerseys. Let's put that up and 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 we'll continue on. That's pretty. And, and what I like about it is, like I said earlier, it truly is. That's a piece that if I'm not a baseball fan, I can put that on and I've got the WS on there. Yeah. And, and yeah. Now, it uh, maybe one of us was a White Sox fan in the past, and that's kind of got some White Sox feel to it as well. It does. It yeah. does. Definitely a little bit of ode to our, to our parent club. And you know, our players are very excited about it as well. I think it makes this, this look – they feel is even more like a major league look. And, right. and so I think that that, that part's going to be well-received also. Mm-hmm. And we've already seen uh, – so on, on our online store, which is where a lot of the merchandise sales come through, right. we're having a ton of local orders, but we're also having a lot of Chicago orders. So really? It's, it's been kind of neat to, to watch that as, we, as we're shipping out items that we're seeing a lot of Chicago-based orders of White Sox fans that say – yeah, that's that's a pretty cool logo, pretty well, cool look. And, you know, to us it's Winston Salem, but to them it says White Sox. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's that that's that was even more ingenious, <laughs> probably. Um, I, I want to come to a game, so so you know, it's yeah, I, I see the play. I mean, parking's got to be ridiculous or stuff like it's expensive. I mean, why do what what? None of that's true. It's, so tell it, me about my game day experience. It, it's it's why I love working in minor league baseball. Uh, my whole career, 18 years, has been in minor league baseball, and, and I love it because it brings affordability, family entertainment, 
and ties in sports. And, and so uh, it's for our community, it's, it's great that whether if you're a big baseball fan, you can come out and have a great time. If you're not a baseball fan, you can come out and have a great time. And what's very unique about minor league baseball, different than we talked about colleges earlier, you know, if you're a Carolina fan and you drive uh, across the state to go see them play football or basketball and they lose, that impacts your experience. If you drive down to Charlotte to see a Carolina Panthers game and they lose, that impacts your experience. You come to a dash game, we could get beat eight. They to don't nothing. lose. Some we win more than we lose. Okay. And, yeah. uh, so Come on now, CJ. The, You're team president. They the, don't lose. The winning, the winning helps. But if we lose eight to nothing, people were walking out and saying the hot dog tasted good. The beer was cold. My kids got to do this, and this promotion was fun. And I saw my neighbors, and I saw people I work with and go to church with, and it's just a fun event. And uh, and so that's what's really cool about minor league baseball is. I can control everything outside the white lines. Mm -hmm. So even when we don't win inside the white lines, everybody's still going home happy. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's great about the experience. But we really do strive to remain affordable. Uh, and so our ticket pricing, most of our ticket pricing, when you look at it over 10 years, is almost identical to what it was 10 years ago. In some areas, it might have gone up a dollar here or two dollars there. But our lowest price ticket is still eight dollars. And you also have those those those. Uh what is it like the four forty bucks or something? And that's you yeah. get four tickets, four drinks, four hot dogs, and and sometimes even a hat thrown in or something. That's like that. so our our Chick Fil A four pack. It's four tickets, four Chick Fil A sandwiches, and four dash hats for thirty two dollars. So it's an awesome deal. I, I'm gonna misquote. I think it's like a hundred and twenty four dollar value. Right. For thirty-two dollars, and right. and it doesn't have to be four; it could be five, six, seven. Right. So a larger family, but it's really a family-driven promotion, and we run one of those a month. So, yeah, if you're looking for the best deal, that's that's one of the best deals we have on, on Monday nights. We do all you can eat for free, mm -hmm. and we don't change the ticket. Everybody's like, "What's the catch?" We don't change the ticket prices. So our still our lowest price tickets eight dollars. You can come in. It's free hot dogs, free corn dogs, free French fries. It's not the healthiest promotion, right. but it's certainly one of the uh, the best promotions that we have. Uh, you can eat 30 hot dogs. I don't recommend don't, that to don't anyone. Don't tell my wife uh, why, where I'm going to be yes. on Monday night. Monday right? nights. Look yep. at our schedule and circle them. Uh, free food Mondays. and uh, So those are the types of promotions that we run, so we, we maintain that affordability. Well, I told you my my experience um, with uh, the Dash is, is that a buddy of mine, Rick, gets uh, – so Rick Babuziak uh, gets – I think uh, the 17 pack or something like yep. that, or 11, I don't know. And so he takes some tickets, and then I think Zach uh, O'Brien takes some, and then I take some. And so I, I usually get four, um, uh, four, four tops with uh, um, um, the, you know the table and up in the in the club, and that includes the drinks and stuff like that. I think for the four uh, for the four games, you know, that's 16 tickets is like 720 dollars. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. And in all head. inclusive, as you mentioned, yeah, that's parkings and yeah, the best, best yeah, that's parking, right. so best food, oh, best drinks. So um, parking, and yes, my the car I drive is a flow vehicle, so I get to park <laughs> on the, <laughs> the flow row. <laughs> and then um, we go in. Uh, uh, if my daughter's one that comes with us, she gets her band to go play. Um, we take, you know, we go upstairs. Uh, we have ice cream, peanuts, uh, popcorn, um, and that's all the bad stuff. Um, we have wine and uh, beer. Um, and then we get a buffet of some, you know, Krispy Kreme donuts are there sometimes <laughs> and things like that. But um, so we get a buffet with, uh, um, it, it just, I mean, what are all the things they cook? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, so they'll rotate different entrees because uh, we do have some fans that come out more often, and so we try to have a good variety. Um, but they'll do, you know, flank steak mm -hmm. and salmon. Um, I need to get the, the menu. Baked the chicken. nights yep. I come, I always come at lunchtime, and so I get the, like, breakfast so, junk. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm coming yeah, we, for lunch. We have four 11 a.m. games, and we do the, the breakfast-style buffet. Um, so we do. We so do that's change automatic it. always because what we do is, is that's one of the things that I do with my team <laughs> is all of us come. I, we take that day. We come to 11 a.m. game. We drink, enjoy the game, fellowship as a team. Um, that's something they love to do. Take pictures of their. But it's so funny. They'll take a picture of their beer glass and say, work's been hard <laughs> today. And um, can, can we get lunch? Or no, you know what I do? I, you're talking to the right person. So right. I can I can work with that on the menus for our day games. But do you know what I do? A lot of people don't know this. As a Flow Club member, right, I can go down to the Carolina Club and get all I can eat down there. So I go get a hamburger down there. That's correct. That is true. Improvise, because you guys always do that. I mean, it's if it doesn't work, you fix mm -hmm. it. 
And I, I'll say the, the best change that we made over the years, uh, we developed a really flexible exchange policy because at the end of the day, we want people to use their tickets. Yep. We want them to, to, to be able to take advantage of their investment. And so whether it's a company or individuals, they can exchange their tickets in advance. So if they know, ah, oh, we're going on vacation this week, they can swap that game out. But we even allow after the game is passed that you could swap out. Which By the is way, a, I've got a few on my desk from two or three years ago. We don't ago. go back that no, far. No, come on. But, but within season, uh, we do allow that because life gets in the way. You, know, right. you mentioned you have a five-year-old. She gets sick, and you right. didn't plan for that. And so even though we prepare, especially in the club area, you know, we've prepared food for everybody that has tickets at that night. But, but we, we realized – you know, if folks are, are, are using their money to make an investment and, and to be able to come out to the ballpark, we want to make sure they can use it. And so we have that exchange policy that even after a game is passed, yep. you can swap and come back in. So it's great. I mean, the, the club experience for, for families is great. Rick uses it the, the perfect way of a mixture of bringing out clients, bringing out employees, bringing out friends, bringing out family. That's, that's what it's all about. And he's a White Sox fan, by the way. He is. He is. Yeah. I haven't told you my team, yet, by the way. <laughs> so as it start, as I guess what I want to do is I've I've just parked, okay. I'm in the flow lot, um, but if I if I didn't have that, I mean, there's plenty of places around that charge very reasonable, like five dollars to park, or you guys have other lots around there. So I mean, sure. It's, uh, so there's uh, actually a, a lot of parking, uh, and especially if you come to a, if if you're really concerned about you, you want a short walk and you want to have great parking. Any of our Sunday through Wednesday games, usually it's very accessible. Certainly on the weekends, it's, it's busier. Um, but if you arrive by 6.15, 6.30, even for a 7 o'clock Friday night game, you can get parking. Right. It's, if you come at 7 o'clock on our biggest nights, you know, that, that, that's where you know, you're going to park at one of the upper lots. Right. Uh, but for 60 out of our 70 games, there's, there's plenty of parking. Little known secret that folks should take advantage of on 4th Street, on those big nights. Right. So every Thursday through Saturday game on 4th Street, right beside Foothills, there's a parking garage that's completely free. And so that's where the new hotel is? Right beside where the yep. new hotel is. So, that, that, so you have secure parking lot. It's completely free. And we run a free shuttle right to the ballpark. And so free parking, free shuttle right to the ballpark. And so one of the, we, we try to tout that and let people and know. Free. And uh, one of the still best kept secrets, but I, I highly recommend it if you're coming out on one of those busier nights, and you can't make it there till seven. That's that's also a great option. Uh, but plenty of parking on site, and then when you come in, certainly you can purchase tickets in advance. But we do have our box office out in the center. And that's field. what I was gonna say. I parked. I walked down there. The, the great statue. I mean, it embodies the family baseball experience. Mm -hmm. um, ticket windows right there. I can walk in. I turn to the left, team store. Haynes get, team store. Yeah. We got all the new gear for this year, so it's it's got a, a great new mix. Definitely, if folks haven't been out in the store for a while, this is the year to go out there and, right. and get those those new WS hats that we mentioned. Right. Um, so you're coming in right to the scoreboard, so you get that awesome view looking into the ballpark, and then you turn around and you can see the Winston Salem skyline right. as you look out into center. Turn field. to the right. We go to the inflatables. Yep. Yeah. So your five-year-old, she's going to be pulling you right. that way yeah. to the inflatables. Doing the slides, doing the slides, yeah. doing the slides. And if you go to the left, you'll go across the, the bridge, which is really a unique feature of our ballpark. that we, we have the bridge across right there in the right field corner that allows when you're coming down Salem Parkway, you could look into the ballpark was part of that design. So you can get that little glimpse of the field as you go by at 45 miles an hour. And so a little tease, but a neat feature within the ballpark. And then you start to make your way around and then, all the good stuff, all yep. the concessions. I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Let's put a picture of the ballpark up so people can understand what we're talking okay. about real quick. And then uh, um, I want to ask you another question here about it. So here's the picture of the park. I, I see where I am. I've come in the back there. And, of course, this is um, – I'm now going down the right field line. All right? And uh, and so we got bathrooms right there. I think you've got a food truck occasionally there and things like that. You I'm proving that I come to a game yeah, occasionally, aren't yeah. I? But you know what? We got to look out towards that field. Um, we've had a lot of famous people, athletes play for the Dash. That's correct. And so, as, and as how's it, our talent this year? So we never quite know this time of year. We have a, a decent idea. Come on, the once, stove's got to be stoked. Once they get come down on. to spring training in Arizona for the White Sox, that's where it gets filtered out a little bit more, and we get a better idea who's coming. So we're coming. Cactus League is what we want to watch, right? That's correct. I, I yep. finally figured this, this out about a year or two ago. Yep. Yep. Cactus so League, Grapefruit League. I White Sox it. are out in Glendale, so about 250 players in the White Sox system will go there, and they start to kind of filter out who's going to be at each level. If you were coming, so we're a couple months from opening day, right. but walking through the ball, this this mental walk through the ballpark is 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 getting me anxious for right. opening day. 
so last year, if you came out on opening day, our center fielder would have been a guy by the name of Luis Robert. Okay. If you watch opening, barring injury or anything fluky happening, if you watch opening day for the Chicago White Sox this season, the starting center fielder will be Luis Robert. Really? So, dash center fielder to start opening day last year. White Sox center fielder. He signed a over $80 million contract with the White Sox this offseason. One of the top prospects in all of minor league baseball. That's freaking awesome. When you talk about five tool players, it's kind of like a, a buzzword. Right. He he jumps off the page all right. five tools. And so that was our starting center fielder last year. Our starting second baseman was Nick Madrigal that was a first-round pick out of Oregon State, won a College World Series. He very likely could be on the White Sox by the end of April. So they both – you could have came to a dash game last year and saw him and will be on the White Sox this year. And honestly, the White Sox roster will probably have about 15 – former dash players really by may all right so all right i want to continue around because i want to talk about the 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 advertising and all that kind of stuff but but let let's peel back the onion here all right i'm gonna make an admission to you i'm not a baseball fan completely that's fair i love the dash (laughs) I, i like to go to games i've started to watch it more um my dad is uh 95 and he is a – by the way, thanks for not punching me when I said <laughs> that. Um, and he is a not whole gang member. St. Louis Cardinals would go look through the <laughs> knot hole and watch the Cardinals play. Loves baseball. Comes to a lot of the <laughs> Dash games. So, But I never grew up playing baseball, never grew up really watching baseball. I'm growing to appreciate it. So <laughs> if I told you this a couple years ago, I hate baseball. Now it's, I'm not a complete baseball <laughs> fan. But I come to Dash games, and I'm now – he has Sunday ticket. I mean, he has Major League Baseball ticket, um, and I stream games and watch them too. So, you know, it's been something that's kind of cool to kind of bring us together. I can say, hey, Cardinals looking <laughs> good. Um, and, uh, you know, th- their manager's from Charlotte. we got to like that too. <laughs> so I used to be a White Sox fan. In fact, uh, I had a friend of mine that stole home plate from Comiskey Park for me. Um, when they were tearing it down uh, to give to me mm. and dropped it in the parking lot and instead brought me a piece of the parking lot. Um, <laughs> they got chased out. Yes, mm. that's true. And uh, that young lady is a, um, I think she's a chiropractor now. So, but never got it. So, <laughs> but I used to, you know, I like the White Sox. I've never told Babuziak that story. He's going to be going, what? <laughs> what? But so I'm learning. You said five tools. So I'm going to guess one of them is hitting, throwing, catching, running maybe, and then I don't know the last yeah. one. Was I? So did, tell me what they cer- are. Certainly speed, running right. is, is one of them. Hitting for average and hitting for power. Okay. Uh, fielding and then uh, and throwing. Okay. And so he's, he's – So he can, he can rocket launch it from the wall and get somebody out of home plate if he had to. Everything. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it just and, – and I, last year when he was taking batting practice, one of the, the manager actually let me know that the other players call him Superman. Right. So it's one of those things where you've got all professional athletes together and you've got somebody that's even on a higher level that they recognize that it's different. So it's it's neat when you see those guys come through. Two year, or Three years ago we had Aloy Jimenez, uh, who was almost rookie of the year this past year uh, for the White Sox. And so there's just certain guys that are just, just different. Yeah. So now – it's a weird setup because does the manager work for you or the manager works for the White Sox organization? All, they're all White Sox. So everything okay. – it kind of go back to those white lines. I say I can help control everything outside the white lines. Right. Inside the white lines, the players, the coaching staff, that is all Chicago White Sox. Okay. So luckily so I don't are, have any, yeah, thank any goodness, involvement right. there. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. So you are really facilities and promotion of the team and, and all of that – the, the product on the field is done by the parent company. Correct. And 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 actually, Mr. Prim owns. So we own the Dash business model. The Dash business yep. model. The city owns the ballpark. Right. The White Sox owns the players. So it's interesting when you come out to a Dash game. Yeah. City facility, White Sox players, uh, but we own the business model that's operating the facility. He owns. It's it's like a franchise. We use Chick Fil A. It's like a Chick Fil A franchise, but Chick Fil A does everything inside, and and and. You're just there to pro. You're you're there to provide them to have the best facility to serve the customers. We're creating those fun memories. Right. To go yeah. back to the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I understand that because the, the next question was going to be is Have you ever told anybody they were going to the show? Because I always yeah. love watching the videos of where you know they um, 
you know, the like they give somebody their scholarship or the, you know, the at ECU, the guy goes into the mom's work and says, do you know who this lady is? <laughs> yeah. and she goes, that's, that's me. Why? Well, would you call your son, tell him he's on scholarship? She's just like crying yeah. and all that stuff. So do you yeah, ever, so have you the, been involved? The manager gets to, to handle all of that because he's got also have to break the hard news when a guy's getting right. moved down to, we're in high A. Uh, right. And, so and I want going, you got to tell me that too. So minor league baseball is basically like a ladder is right. the easiest way to explain it. And there's, there's rookie ball, low A, high A, double A, triple A. We're about halfway up that ladder being in high A baseball. And so if in the White Sox system, if they're moved down, low A is in Kannapolis, so not too far from a right. travel standpoint. Uh, they're double A's Birmingham, so usually when our guys get promoted, it's either to double A Birmingham or triple A Charlotte. Right. Um, and so it that's their next crazy. step. Charlotte has both sides, so they have so so basically I start out at in Charlotte, I come to Winston Salem, I go to Birmingham, then I come back to Charlotte with Canap was right, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's it's great for the White Sox. They have all those minor league teams so close, it makes it easy that they're able to have some roving instructors, and and it just for travel standpoint makes everything easier. But and let me tell you. When there was a certain player that decided he was going to play baseball, a lot of people were really excited that uh, he was going to go to the White Sox organization because mm-hmm. they knew they were going to see him with the, there, there's a possibility he could come all the way to high A Winston, you know. Mm-hmm. But of course, I, I think he settled pretty much in Birmingham. Yeah, Michael yeah. Jordan played his all his baseball career in Birmingham, and then the most recent sensation in minor league baseball has been Tim Tebow. All right. And unfortunately, the Mets don't have a team in our league because right. uh, there was a dramatic impact, a positive impact on attendance everywhere that, that Tim Tebow went yeah. along the way. Yeah, and then, um, you know, uh, but it's, it's amazing to me is, is that, you know, you've got these opportunities in our towns that, like, you know, the Big Hurts uh, it went back to Birmingham to, to rehab a game or two when, when he was playing and things like that. I mean, it's, you know, so we're not far away from that. Is there any desire to try and get us – uh, I mean, what what would there, there's really nothing. I mean, what Birmingham would have to get rid of their team or yeah, there's a lot of layers to 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 changing league. But w- we've been a long time member of the Carolina League. It's the right. perfect fit. Uh, we've been fortunate enough, and really the support of the community. There's 30 high A baseball teams. We've been number one and number two in attendance every year at the new downtown ballpark. We're right. and we're 10 years in now, going into year 11. Uh, the last three years we've been number one in attendance out of those 30 teams, and so. I think it's the right level of baseball. A lot of great talent, obviously, with Luis Roberts and Nick Madrigals of the world coming through Winston-Salem. So it's it's been fantastic. Now, is there a possibility? And of course, this is now you can uh, the the answer can be John. You're not asking me that, I, but uh, you just made me think of something. You know, they're pushing for Charlotte to get a pro team. So if the Charlotte team went pro, would that be an opportunity? Because that three A team would probably not be there anymore then. Would that mean that Birmingham would have the opportunity to maybe be 3A and Winston-Salem be the prop- opportunity to be the next Birmingham? I probably need a two-hour podcast to answer that question, John. And we'll be back. <laughs> no. All right. Yeah, because, you know, it's and, – and, and, and as you said, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, you're, you're – uh, you're in the big the big leagues when it comes to the Mountaineers. You know, we're a um, what is it? Uh, there's the Power Five, and then we're the what the next one down mm-hmm. or something. Um, and uh, seeing it's the the shifts in the leagues mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Do you go to winter meetings or anything like that? I do. So every year we go to the baseball winter meetings. Okay. Uh, uh, this this past year was in San Diego, so not a bad place to be in December. <sighs> Suffered through it, huh? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, every year we, we have our league meetings. Uh, one really neat thing for Winston-Salem is next year we'll be hosting Minor League Baseball's Innovator Summit, Okay. which is a Minor League Baseball-specific uh, seminar that's held in late September. And it'll be about 700 uh, individuals coming from various teams around the country that will come into Winston-Salem for a week. So great for our hotels, What can we do downtown. to help out with that? So it'll ju- it big win- Visit Winston-Salem was a great partner with us of, right. uh, to, to host that. It goes around to different cities uh, throughout the country. And with all the new hotels and all the development downtown and certainly our ballpark, it, it made it the perfect fit for minor league baseball. So we're thrilled to be hosting that this year. Mm-hmm. Well, let's go back to the ballpark because yep. we've talked about it. So I don't want to say that it's creepy. All right? I want to try and figure this out. It's it's innovative as crazy. It's it's just crazy to me. So after we've been looking at the uh, at the team, as I turn and start to head towards the food and the a couple cars that are sitting out, based on if they're there or if they're underneath the cover, yeah. I really paid attention. Yeah. You know, there's a couple billboards now, and they're you know they're normal size screens, probably what maybe three by five, four by eight, or whatever that, and you can help me. 
better my marketing message through these ISM screens? I mean, you're not yeah. only promoting me, you're telling me how to make my message better. Sure. What the heck is yeah. this? So uh, really new, really innovative technology. And uh, we're, we're different in, in our sponsorship model than, than a lot of professional teams. Uh, we believe less is more. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have fewer partners. When you look at our outfield wall, there's just a handful of partners. And so we'll have you know one car dealership. We'll have one bank. We'll have one uh, you know real estate agency. And mm -hmm. so... We want to be able to really drive home their message. And one of the things we really want to make sure, because it's what we try to do with our marketing, is we want to get the right message to the right people at the right time. And so we try to do the same thing for our partners. And so one of the things we, we realize is because we appeal to so many folks, or, you know, 7-year-olds, 70-year-olds, we're pretty much 50-50, male, female, coming out to our games. So we've got everybody coming out to the ballpark. But a company might have very different messaging that they want for different audiences. And so with these new screens, they have them a lot at, at airports and other kind of high traffic facilities. The screen can read the, the crowd that, that is looking at the screen, and it can provide information back to our partners uh, so we can let them know, okay, when you displayed this message, it was viewed by females at 70% and males 30%. And, and can females you tell look me at how long that I look at it, right? Yeah, that females looked at it for 12 seconds versus males only looked at it for four you seconds. You see the 13-year-old behind the camera yeah. shaking his head going, uh-oh. Yeah, so, so nothing intrusive uh, on the customer, but just really good information for the partners to know what messaging resonates. Uh, so, so really just, like I said, innovative technology makes our messaging more effective, our partners, but without being invasive to Well, no, to it's customers. all about the data. Yep. And, 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 you know, I, I kid with you about it, but, I mean, seriously, it's a phenomenal piece. And in that piece, what is happening is, is you now know that if you put blue shoes on there, that the women are going to look at it 80% uh, of the time for 10 seconds, the men 10% of the time for 10 seconds, whatever. But if you change that shoe to red, it now increases both the men and the women looking at it. And mm -hmm. so – it's not as intrusive because now I'm putting up the message that the people, people want, want to see. see. Exactly. And, uh, and also just, see, I actually got it. Even I just a, have to a give message a in general that they can see, gosh, nobody is paying attention because we can give the, you know, our other partners, well, their messaging is, they may hate this logo. They don't look at my logo. Yeah. So then what do I got to do? I got to change it. Yeah. yeah. So just good information for, for everybody involved. And so it's, it's, it's fun. It's interesting. Uh, but, but we're always looking for those new ways to help our partners get their message out. Um, to our fans. Mm -hmm. Well, I go. I keep going. I'm mm -hmm. past that. And, and there's usually a car or two there. There's an opportunity for some of the good food. And then there's the table usually there that's people wanting to help me out if I need something. Mm -hmm. And then I get to the carpet. Yeah. Yeah. So I go up there. I mean, you want your drink tickets? Why do they even ask that question? <laughs> but yes. Um, ride the elevator up, and, and we go upstairs. We're going to pause there, and we'll continue around downstairs. But we go around downstairs. We've got the, the media. Uh, Jeffrey sometimes calls. Is he still doing it a lot for you? He or does. Some? He does. Okay. So, yeah. so i got to beat on the window yeah. and wave at Jeffrey. I'm, I know him from back uh, uh, when his mom uh, worked over at uh, Mount Tabor Summer Enrichment Program, and he and I were in plays together. Great guy. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal voice. <laughs> Um, and uh, come around, and, and, and then you get to um, the place to eat if you're in the Carolina Club. All right, so that's that. Um, so uh, I want to I wanna take a quick break. Uh, so let's put up – we'll put up your website. Okay, okay. we'll put it, your website up, and then we'll come back, and I want to finish up about the most important part about the whole entire ballpark, the food. Mm -hmm. So – so here's a picture of your website. Uh, best way to get you guys is what online? www.ws-.com. ws-.com. That's W-S-D-A-S-H.com. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's the website. So um, then, of course, if I continued on, we would go to the beer garden area kind of or the, 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 the low – what is that? The uh, – Third base line. Brew pen is out in left field. Foothills brew pen, brew pen out down the third base line out in left field. I've you know when we would do the the noon games or whatever, it's great if it's if it's overcast. Mm -hmm. If it's in the sun, I'm I'm no I'm 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 up top. <laughs> um, and then uh, and then the inflatables. Holy cow! I mean that, that you've taken out the. I don't want to go, Daddy, <laughs> with you. Um, and, uh, you know, you let her in there, she plays some, uh, great interaction with other little kids. They've got the jumpy, they've got the, 
uh, carousel and all that kind of stuff. That's what a great, you know, great piece. I mean, it's it's you're really trying to bring the family in, right? Yeah, one of the things I take the most pride in is when people tell me that they have family from out of town that have come to Winston Salem, and it's the summer, and they choose to bring their out of town family to the ballpark because that's how they want to show off Winston Salem, and they know that they'll have a great time. And so, that's really what we try to accomplish is that. You know, every single person that comes out is going to walk out with a smile on their face. Well, you said summertime, so that's it. you. Uh, you guys are the boys of summer, so uh, the, the I think probably two or three things left to talk about because I've I've had you here way too long <laughs> for you, not for us. <laughs> I mean, I'll t- talk to you the rest of the day. Um, what are those things that you do uh, on Friday nights? Uh, they're not popular at all, right? Yeah, those Friday night fireworks have not have not caught on. Uh, so one of these years, you one know, of these it, years, it'll gosh. just it'll click. How often do uh, you just beg for that? Do, you know what I mean, do you get it every year the July Fourth game, or is it every other year? So we've had it every single year. Right, you uh, beg, so, beg, uh, beg. So You're greasing within, somebody's pot within, at the commissioner's within office. our league. We've, we we're very fortunate that there's a few teams that cannot host games on July Fourth because their parking lot is used for the the city show. So right. there's. We've been fortunate. So we know uh, what those teams are now after yeah, 10 years, yeah, right? So yeah. we, we've been fortunate enough to host it every year, that, and it, it's awesome to be the community's gathering place. We have, on those games, we've been over 9,000 people in the ballpark. We have 5,500 fixed seats. We bring in bleachers. Uh, so we, we pack the ballpark. And then there's another 2,000 on the hill up beyond our parking right. lot. And so it's it's awesome to be able to see that of just everybody really within Forsyth County and beyond coming into the ballpark footprint on July 4th. It's it's phenomenal. You guys do a great job, and um, I'm hungry. <laughs> so tell me about the food. Yeah, so you mentioned I mean, the food. Go up to the Flow Club and all that. So you got full bar up there. We've got all the staples, certainly hot dogs and hamburgers and peanuts and popcorn and all those staples people think of at a ballpark. But a lot of unique items. We're great partners as well. So we have uh, Domino's, Lowe's Foods, Chick-fil-A. So a lot of great partners that have food and beverage out at the ballpark, Foothills and Pepsi. Uh, from the beverage standpoint. Uh, but one of the more unique items we have is our cheesy pig dog. So if you venture down that third baseline, we've got... Is the that che- on the left-hand side it's right on the before? Right okay. before the Carolina plant, okay. the Pepsi Carolina plant. It, so the cheesy pig dog, it's macaroni and cheese, barbecue, and then a hot dog. So cheesy pig dog. Extremely healthy, uh, you know, a great item, but you got to try it at least. It, they actually complement each other e- extremely well. Why don't you just uh, go ahead and do the you know, the Krispy Kreme burger? Yeah. You know, have you had one of those? Our they fans m- make them, right. so we've had cr- we've had Krispy Kreme donuts at the ballpark, and and fans will will create their own uh, Krispy Kreme creations yep. uh, with with our hamburgers, and so uh, you name it, we we've got it. But certainly some healthy options as well. But uh, we run a lot of different weekly promotions to kind of highlight different food products. We do taco Tuesdays right. and uh, family Sundays that, uh, and uh, thirsty Thursdays. So a lot of different promotions involving food. Mm-hmm. And so I can get a ticket, eight bucks if I want one. And of course you said that on Monday nights I can I pay eight bucks and I just come to the game and eat for free. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can also entertain. Do you guys, are all of the suites taken or can you rent a suite or uh, what, so we have some that? that are on a contract basis uh, and then some that are nightly rentals. Right. So it's a great place for, Company outings for retirement parties, birthday parties, you name it, we, right. we've hosted them. What's great about our suites is we actually allow the companies to use them during the day as right. well if they'd like to. Uh, we have some 16-person suites, 32-person, then our 50-person party decks, right. our picnic terrace. So I think with the Realtors Association, we've done some party yes, decks and definitely. terraces. Yeah, you probably talked to Amanda Hobbs about yeah. that. Right? Yeah, okay. we, anywhere from 10 people to 3,000. We okay. do 3,000-person picnics. So the larger employers in the area, certainly, you know, we're a great venue because we're completely turnkey. Right. We've got the entertainment, we've got the food and beverage, and they show up, they have fun, and they're able to leave without having to lift a finger. Now, uh, I'm, I've got to ask a question. I'm going to ask it so that uh, I'm, uh, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> How long have you had this food and beverage vendor? All 10 years. Uh, okay. so, our, our so this food and beverage vendor, if I'm correct, is the same food and beverage vendor that is a small little like college stadium or high school stadium in Dallas? For the Cowboys? So you are correct. Uh, the company Legends Hospitality that, was, was formed. That was a poll, wasn't it? Yeah, when when Yankee Stadium and the Cowboys Stadium were being built, I guess about 12 years ago now, uh, the Yankees and the Cowboys said, where are the Yankees and the Cowboys? Why do we need to have a separate company? Let's create our own food and beverage company. And so they did, and we were their first minor league venue. So starting out, they had – Cowboy Stadium, Yankee Stadium, and, and our ballpark. Um, and, it's crazy. Uh, so a great partner for all 10 years. Uh, and uh, so and they've since grown tremendously right. and have venues all throughout the world now that they operate. Uh, but 
we were their first minor league baseball facility. Yeah, I have a friend of mine that had worked for them, and he's like, yeah, no, you know, like, I trained in Dallas. I'm like, we're in Dallas uh, for the Cowboys. They, you know, we're the same vendor as the Cowboys. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just a wonderful experience. And, you know, we've, we've said so much about it. Uh, I guess w- what I want you to do before you go is tell people, sell them a ticket. I mean, we, you, that's what you do, CJ. And so CJ's president mm-hmm. of the Dash. And so, you know, with all this experience, let's sell some tickets. What do we got to do? Sure. I think the, the thing for folks to keep in mind is all the different ways that they could could come out to the ballpark uh, and so that can be through a church group that can be through a community organization that they're part of their son's little league team their their daughter's soccer team whatever maybe group outings are a big part of our business birthday parties so just keeping in mind that we're a great turnkey uh, option uh, mm-hmm. for any kind of party that you're looking to have um, but even on the individual basis as a family schedules are tough and luckily we have 70 games so we're over five months and so finding that right day that right time our schedule be is is out our promotional schedule will be coming out very soon so look on our website look through the promotions of gosh we'd love to come out on a thursday thursday or we'd love to come out on a friday night fireworks or you know what day what promotion makes the most sense for them and and if you've never been out I, I tell people, you got to try it, because if you're not a baseball fan, I really challenge anybody to come out and have not have fun. Uh, who isn't f- a fan of fireworks? So come out on a Friday night and, and give us a shot, and uh, it, you won't be disappointed. I got your next advertising idea for you. Okay. Personally guarantee if they don't have a good time, you'll give them their ticket back, because I don't see anybody – ever not enjoying that stadium yeah i i do my best to, especially on, on big nights i'll be at our main gate as fans are leaving and there's a couple entry exit points so i can't see everybody but our main gate where most phone fans are walking out i try to be there i'm usually there as fans are coming in as right. well because I, I i try to look at those those faces right and I you're mean, the you're the ism screen yes person, on yeah. a personal level and so i mean it's 99.9 percent that i'm seeing those smiling faces but i want to try to see if i so i can go ask that fan you know is there something we can get from right. that and uh you know, we have a, a really, really, really high success rate. You know, I think we I, are at I that agree. 99.9% of fans that are walking out happy. And so that's where I, I challenge folks, if you haven't been or it's been a couple of years, come back out and, and have fun again. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I honestly, I, it, that that is something that um, we're so lucky to have in our community. Um, I think that uh, you guys do a great job. And like I said, I mean, you're, you're guaranteed to have a good time. Um, and so – uh, he's standing at the gate to talk to you if you're not. So um, I just want to say thank you to you. Appreciate you being on the chat. And uh, folks, we'll be back next week with more Camel City Chat. Don't forget to go on YouTube and uh, click the like button, subscribe, uh, um, check us out on Facebook and, and all those things. And, of course, how do we get in touch with you guys, ws-dash.com? That's the best place to go. and then okay. uh, Or you can give us a call at 714-2287. 336-714-2287. We'll put it on the screen here and put the website up again. And uh, thanks to team president, CJ Johnson, for sitting with us today on Camel City Chat. <laughs>